The arrival of the F-22 Raptor was not just another addition. The Lockheed Project inaugurated the fifth generation of stealth aircraft and since its commissioning it has become the absolute king of air superiority. But it was not always like that. During its development it had a spectacular opponent that surpassed it in many aspects. We are talking about the YF-23 Northrop, the most powerful combat ship ever put into action. Thanks to documents and stories from pilots, we can reconstruct what those mythical planes that remained in history despite not having flown a single mission really were. Stay with us to learn more about this plane and its unsuccessful race to become the main fifth-generation ship on the planet. Spurred on by Soviet advances, in 1981 the U.S. Air Force launched the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program to develop the next key piece in its arsenal. Nine companies were initially asked to submit fighter designs that could fulfill the air supremacy role hitherto performed by the F-15 Eagle. The deadline was 1991 and the requirements were quite ambitious. Ability to fly at supersonic speed sustained. Have great combat performance to face the Soviet Su-27 and MiG-29. Great stealth for both radar, infrared and electromagnetic signals. Scalability that allows the aircraft to be adapted to the needs of the Navy. Have a weight limit of 22,000 kilograms. Unit cost not exceeding $35 million. From 1986, Lockheed and Northrop took the lead, and in the first months of 1991 they presented their prototypes in a series of comparative tests. The YF-23 was a formidable machine that more than met the requirements, but the YF-22, a prototype that led to the F-22 Raptor, was chosen as the new air superiority craft. Before delving into the reasons for that choice, let's get to know the YF-23 in detail. It was an unconventional aircraft, with trapezoidal wings, a V-shaped tail and a large belly area. This gave it good visibility and reduced aerodynamic drag at supersonic speeds, as well as offering good balance, control and stability. Below the fuselage, between the nose and main landing gear, was a large weapons bay. There it could carry 8 AIM-120 and AIM-9 air-to-air missiles, as well as a diverse payload of air-to-ground missiles capable of destroying fortified targets. Later we'll delve into the importance of weaponry during the 1991 tests and how they ended up being Northrop's undoing. The YF-23 measured approximately 21 meters in length, a wingspan of 13.3 meters and 4.3 meters in height. Its empty weight was 14.97 tons, loaded weight 23.33 tons, and a maximum takeoff weight of 29 tons. This made it slightly larger than the Lockheed prototype, but it was still believed to be more difficult to detect. One of the YF-23 strengths was invisibility, a subject in which Northrop had extensive experience following the design and production of the B-2 Spirit stealth bomber. Part of its surface was covered with a ceramic material to absorb heat from the flowing gases, thus reducing its infrared signature. A crucial difference between both prototypes was in their avionics systems. For the YF-23, a federated system had been planned that was intended to be able to fit new parts and modernizations at any time without affecting the previous operation. The YF-22 instead pointed to a somewhat more rigid, but also simpler, traditional integrated system. Although the YF-23 was an advanced design, in order to reduce costs and present a more tempting offering, some components from the F-15 Eagle were used, including the nosewheel unit and forward cockpit. In total, two prototypes were built that used two different engines. The first used Pratt & Whitney YF-119 and was nicknamed Black Widow 2 because of its jet black paint. The second was known as Grey Ghost due to its completely grey exterior and used General Electric YF-120 engines, which allowed it to reach supersonic speeds of Mach 1.8. Its operating range was 4,500 km and its combat range was approximately 1,287 km, numbers that exceed the F-22, whose operating range is 3,000 km and its combat range is 1,093 km. Before continuing, do you know of any other interesting weapons that failed to pass the testing stage? Leave your answer in the comment box below. 
The tests were carried out during 1991 with a series of items that the ships had to overcome. At the end of the tests, both prototypes more than met the requirements proposed by the Air Force. So why did the YF-22 take the throne of fifth-generation fighters? The answer has to do both with technical issues and with simple and plain sales capacity. First of all, we must talk about the extraordinary presentation of the Lockheed model during the tests carried out by the Air Force. The YF-22 demonstrated high alpha degrees in flight, reaching as high as 60 degrees. While the YF-23 is believed to have been more maneuverable, it failed to demonstrate its capabilities attractively. Lockheed also conducted AIM-9 and AIM-120 missile launches during the displays. This was not a test requirement, but it certainly impressed the U.S. Air Force Fighter Command and gave the YF-22 an extra point. It is worth drawing on the experience of test pilot Paul Metz, who was part of the 1991 trials. Metz described the Northrop Group as an excellent team of engineers who could only speak in technical terms, they did not feel the need to sell their product. In contrast, Lockheed included a major marketing and sales arm that worked closely with the engineers to design the airshow. In the words of Metz, that demonstration left a lasting impression. Aviation experts also say that Northrop's somewhat revolutionary model may have scared off the Air Force, which was looking for a more conservative prototype that could be easily adapted to the needs of the Navy. In this respect, the YF-23's weapons bay proved problematic and outdated compared to its rival. Another argument was the monetary cost, although the latter is the subject of debate. Although the YF-23 used parts from the F-15, it still cost more. The problem is that in recent years the F-22 has represented a very important expense for the United States between updates, maintenance and operations related to the huge Raptor fleet. Finally, and perhaps most decisively, we must mention the bad relationship between the Pentagon and the Northrop Company. During the design and production of the B-2 Spirit Bomber there were problems of overpricing, which undermined its credibility and resulted in a lethal sentence for the company. As with all great failed projects, time made the YF-23 a cult model. While the F-22 turned out to be a powerful aircraft that more than met America's expectations, it's impossible not to wonder what would have happened if Northrop had thought of the 1991 trials as not just a technical presentation, but also a spectacle. If you enjoyed this video, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and activate notifications. We also leave you links to other episodes in the description. Thank you for joining us until the end and we will meet again in the next military aviation videos.